Yeah. Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat yeah. and Quaker puffed rice, yeah. the breakfast cereal shot from guns, yeah. Yeah. present Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. Oh, 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 oh. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. There's no one that can make a better cereal than Quaker Pop Wheat. It's neat. And when you hear that shooting, you're darn tootin'. The Quaker makes the ones shot from guns. And that's why there's such a taste wallop in both Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. These king-size ready-to-serve premium grains are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. And say, when you taste their tasty nut-like goodness with milk or cream and your favorite fruit, mmm, mmm, there's a treat you'll want for breakfast every morning. Eat the one and only delicious, nutritious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police answered a knock at his cabin door in Whitehorse early one morning. Quiet, King. Hiya, Sergeant. Well, Jake Underhill, come in out of the cold. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. <laughs> well, what do you know? <laughs> King remembers me, too. Hello there, fella. <laughs> what you got back in town, Jake? Last night, I made the trip through White Pass and Skagway with a young fella I met there. Oh? Pull up a chair. Uh, thanks. You know, I'm sure glad to find you in town. Oh, I usually come through here about this time of year. What brings you here so early? Something wrong? Well, not exactly, but uh, there might be if somebody doesn't do something about it. What do you mean? Well, from something I've heard, Sergeant, there's likely to be a killing. What makes you think so? Because the fellow who aims to do it told me so. Well, he may have been joking, or perhaps he said it in a moment of anger. Now, listen, Sergeant. This hombre spent nearly a year trailing a man from Frisco here to Whitehorse because huh? he vowed to kill him. I see. Who's the victim to be? I don't know. He wouldn't tell me that. But I figured if I came and told you, you'd keep him from doing it and ruining his life. He'll end his life if he goes through with it. He'll be hanged for murder. Yep, that's just what I told him. But he said he didn't care. Who is this man you're talking about? His name is Neil Holton. He's a nice young fellow, Sergeant. I sort of took a liking to him. I don't like to see him so set on doing a thing like that. It's up to me to see that he doesn't. Where is he now? I left him at the hotel asleep in... Now... Maybe if you'd have a talk with him... That's what I intend to do. I'll go to the hotel before he has a chance to leave. Come on. Taking King with him, Sergeant Preston went to the hotel with Jake Underhill. Neil, who was dressing, looked up as they entered the room. Morning, Neil. What? Money. Now, look, Jake, what's the idea of bringing him here? Well, Neil, after what you told me and all, I figured I'd oh, better... I should have known I couldn't trust you to keep your mouth shut. I ought to knock your head off for this. Now, hey, hey, now, now, let go. Hold it, Neil. Let go of Jake. Let go, I say. <laughs> All right. That dog and you to take his part, I have no choice. But I didn't expect him to double-cross me and make trouble. Well, now, honest, Neil, I was only trying to keep you from getting into real trouble. That's why I went to Sergeant Preston, figuring he'd know what to do. It's all right, King. Quiet, boy. Uh, Sergeant Preston, he's a good friend of mine. Neil. Maybe so. He represents the law, and I have no use for lawmen. I suppose you told him why I came to Whitehorse, too, didn't you? Yes, Neil, he did. He said you came here for the purpose of killing someone. Well, what if I did? Be sensible. You don't think for a minute I'd let you go through with such a thing, do you? In other words, then, you intend to put me in jail so as I can't go through with it. 
But remember, you can't keep me there forever. No, Neil, I have no charge on which to hold you. Unless you threaten some certain person. In that case, you'd better let me alone until I do. Now listen, Neil, I don't know what happened in the past, but something evidently made you bitter. Bitter enough to ruin your life. Give up this idea, Neil. Now look, I... Sergeant, why did you have to come here with that kind of talk anyway? Sergeant Preston, just trying to help you. Go on, tell him about it. I do want to help you, if I can, Neil. Well, all right. You see, a little over three years ago, a certain man and I worked as tellers in a Frisco bank. I see. One day, a shipment of new money came in, $10,000. I checked it, signed the receipt for it. I was just about to leave my window and take the cash to the vault when the other teller called me. Holton. Holton, come here. What's the matter? I feel dizzy. Maybe you're a heart attack. Go on. Oh, here, let me help you. You better sit down. Come here. Water, Neil. Go back and bring me some water. Hurry, will you? Sure, sure. Just sit right there. I'll bring you some water in a minute. I'll be right back. I went into the back room, got some water, and brought it to him. He seemed better in a few minutes. Then I took the new bills and put them in the vault. Go on. What happened? That night, the other teller came to my room at the hotel, saying he wanted to thank me for helping when he felt sick. He didn't stay long. The next day, the cashier called me into his office. The sheriff was in there with him. You sent for me, sir? Yes, Holden, I did. You checked in a shipment of new bills yesterday afternoon, didn't you? Well, that's right. I counted the money and signed for it, then put it in the vault. Why, sir? That bundle is short $2,000, Holden. What? What do you have to say about that? But that's impossible. I... I counted it before I signed for it. It was all there. Don't try to lie out of it. The sheriff searched your hotel room and found $500 of the new bills hidden there. That's right. No, no, it can't be true. This is some kind of a frame-up. I didn't take any of that money, I tell you. Where's the rest of that cash? I don't know. I know it was all there when I put it in the vault. The cash found in your room is proof against you. I've signed a complaint, and the sheriff has a warrant for your arrest. Now, hold on. I'm not going to let you frame me this way. I'm taking you to jail, Holton. If you make any trouble, I might have to use this gun. Come along quietly. You'll be plenty sorry. Well, I reckon as things look, the sheriff had to take you in, Neil. He must have found that new money in your room, like he said. No, he found it there, all right. But they found only $500 of the new bills in your room. That it? That's right, Sergeant. Uh, you think the other teller planted the money there? I know he did. I was sentenced to two years for embezzlement. When I got out, I vowed I'd find him, so I started hunting. I figure the hunt is about ended now. Well, that's quite a story, Neil. I... I wouldn't expect a police officer to believe I was framed. I'm inclined to believe you. Of course, murder isn't the answer. It ought to mean more to you to clear your name. But don't forget, I spent two years in jail. The past could be forgotten since you're young enough to build a good future for yourself, Neil. Yeah, that's the way I figure it. Now listen, Neil. I'm ready to help you clear your name, provided you'll do it my way and forget this vow you made. Well, if you could clear me. Will you name the man you've followed here? His name is Sandy Parlin. Sandy Parlin? Oh, he owns the cafe in town. Hey, so that's who it is. Never did like him. I often figured Parlin was behind some of the underhanded things that have happened around White Horse here. Possibly, but Parlin's been careful to keep within the law, Jake. Neil, is that your gun on the dresser? That's right. I'll take care of it for you. Now, hold on. I'll Sergeant, give it back I... to you before long. Right now, I don't want you to get into trouble. I've been thinking of a plan that may clear your name and be the means of putting Sandy Parlin behind bars where he belongs. Now listen, both of you. Sergeant Preston told Jake and Neil part of his plan. Then the three men went to Preston's cabin. Later that morning, Jake went to the cafe. Well, look, Jake Underhill is back in town. Howdy, there, Jake. Howdy, boys. <laughs> sure good to be in White Horse again. Hello, oh, Underhill. I suppose you went through all the gold you took out of here last spring, I huh? sure did, Sandy. But I had a good time while it lasted. I figured there's lots more where that came from, so I came back. The trouble is, you sourdoughs never know when you've got enough. Well, with newcomers drifting through all the time, uh, you never know when the gold will give out. 
So I figured to get it while it's getting good. Oh, that's a good idea, isn't it? <laughs> In fact, the only fellow I ever met who wasn't coming here to search for gold was a young, hot-tempered hombre who came up from Skagway with me. Well, his temper will soon cool off up here. Yeah, <laughs> the only thing besides gold is ice and snow. Right, right, right. Well, it seems like cool that fellow I spoke hurry. of is up here after some polecat who framed him into jail. Says he's been trailing him about a year already. But he finally heard he was here in Whitehorse. Did he say who he was after, Jake? Well, I asked him on the way up, but he wouldn't tell me. Says he's out to gun that crook, and I might warn him if I knew his name. I see. What's that young fellow's name? Maybe he's come through here before. Nope. This is the first time he's been here. Says he came from Frisco. His name is Neil Holton. Uh, Neil Holton, you say? Yep. You couldn't have heard of him, Sandy. Oh, of course not. But... How old is he? Oh, 24 5, I'd say. I wonder who he's after. There yeah, might be somebody who's right in here now. <laughs> Reckon he'll be coming in here to look the crowd over later. <laughs> All of you better think back to see if you ever framed a young fellow into jail back in Frisco. <laughs> 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 who would be hanged if he gunned anyone here in the Yukon openly? Yeah, yeah, that's what I told him. But he doesn't seem to care, just so he does what he vowed to do. Now, of course, if he was smart, he'd hire a gun slicker, too, to do the job for him somewhere's out of town. Well, boys, I can't stay long. <laughs> Let's have some refreshments to celebrate my return. <laughs> How about it? Oh, come on, boys. After Jake left the cafe, Sandy Parlin was talking to two of his men in the back office. That young fool Neil Holton, Jake mentioned, is here in town to gun me. You? Holy mackerel, what for? We knew each other in San Francisco three years ago. He thinks I framed him into jail. Well, did you, Sandy? None of your business. Point is, he's here in town right now, ready to put a bullet in me. Well, since you know it, you can be ready and gun him first. Don't be a fool, Lou. I don't want to hang for murder. Well, what do you plan to do? I'm turning over the job to you two fellas. Hey, no, wait a minute. Burley and I don't want to hang either. Oh, that's right, Lou. We don't. No use talking about it. Sit down, Burley. You too, Lou. You'll do what I tell you, Savvy. Well, listen, Sandy, there's no Look, use... Look, I have enough get... on both of you already to have you hang. Oh, now, take it easy, Sandy. Yeah, there's no use of getting right. And listen... The news gets out that I'm the one he came gunning for, and then he's found dead. I'd have to have a mighty good alibi. Yeah, you would. But what do you want us to do? Go to that old cabin on Elk Ridge and wait. When he comes there, get rid of him and toss his body into the gully. He might never be found then. What gives you the idea you'll go to that cabin? That's what I'd like to know. He'll be coming here today, and soon, I figure. I'll have Sadie Lawrence, the singer here, get talking to him before he starts asking around or mentioning who he's hunting for. I'll tell Sadie what to say, and I guarantee he'll go to the cabin before tonight. Think Sadie will fix it for him to go there when she hears what's going to happen to him? She's not going to know what it's about, don't worry. She'll jump at the chance to make $50 to keep her mouth shut, too. Now get going. And don't slip up on what you have to do. Uh, you might be sorry. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Here's the breakfast dish that brings cheers from the whole family. It's swell-tasting Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with milk or cream and fruit. Everybody, Dad, the youngsters, Mom, Grandma, they all go for these king-size, ready-to-serve premium grains of rice or wheat. They're the ones shot from guns, so they're crisp and tender, bigger and better tasting. Let the whole family enjoy this economical deluxe breakfast treat every morning. Delicious Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. And here's a tip for you fellas and girls. Have paper and pencil handy for an exciting surprise. It's coming at the end of the program. Now to continue. Sandy sat at the back table with the singer Sadie Lawrence when the door opened and Neil Holton entered the cafe. There he is now, Sadie. You know what to say. Yes, don't worry. I'll slip into the back office and keep out of sight. Now go to it. I'll manage, all right. See you later. Gosh, she's sure nice looking. Hello, mister. Oh, afternoon, ma'am. You look like a stranger here, so I thought I'd speak to you. I'm Sadie Lawrence. Well, glad to know you. I'm Neil Holton. Care to sit down here at the table? 
Well, I... I uh... oh, don't worry. It'll be all right. I'm the singer here, and I thought you'd like someone to talk to until you get acquainted with the others. Oh, sure. Sure, thanks. You are new here, aren't you, Mr. Holton? Oh, yes, ma'am. I came into town last night. Did you come far? Uh, from Skagway. But actually, I'm from Frisco. I left there a year ago. Really? Imagine all the way from San Francisco. You know, there's another man here from San Francisco, too. Uh -huh. You two ought to know each other. Is that right? What's his name? Parlin. Sandy Parlin. Oh, Sandy Parlin, huh? Say, hey, maybe you knew him back in San Francisco, did you? Oh, I, I might have met him. Frisco's a big place, you know. Oh, of course. You can't expect a person to know everybody there like they do up here. That's right, ma'am. You really ought to meet Sandy Parlin since you're both so far from home. Oh, yeah. In fact, I'd like to meet him. Where is he? Oh, he has a claim up on Elk Ridge. In fact, he's thinking of taking a partner. That's a good chance for a Chichaco like you. What? Uh... Uh, Chichaco? <laughs> that means tenderfoot up here. Oh. Anyway, maybe if you went to see Sandy Parlin this afternoon, you could come to terms with him, being from his hometown and all. Well, it's worth thinking about, ma'am. Uh, where is Elk Ridge? It's very easy to find. Just go out the Elk Ridge Trail about two miles. His cabin is on the right. Well, thanks for telling me. If you'll excuse me, I'll go get my dog team and go out there to see him. Good. I'm sure you two will get along. Let me know how you make out. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Holton. Goodbye, ma'am. Leaving the cafe, Neil Holton went immediately to Sergeant Preston's cabin, where Preston was waiting with Jake Underhill. Neil told them what had happened. Then Preston suggested they get their dog team and meet him in half an hour. About ten minutes after Neil and Jake had left the cabin, there was a knock at the door. Quiet, boy. Sergeant Preston, I must talk to you. Oh, of course. Come in, Sadie. There isn't much time, Sergeant. Please believe what I'll tell you and do something. What's happened? It, it's about a nice young fellow, a stranger named Neil Holton. What about him? Well, I, I don't know where to find him quickly, but I... Well, I'll be to blame if he's killed. I was a fool to do what Sandy told me to. Take it easy, Sadie. I know Holton, and I know what you said to him. What? I'll see him before he leaves for Elk Ridge. Oh, thank heaven. Don't let him go, Sergeant. Here's the money Sandy gave me to talk to Holton and to keep quiet about it. Why are you changing your mind? Sergeant, you must believe me. I didn't know what it meant at the time. Sandy said he had a reason for getting Holton out of town for a while so they could talk in private. I see. But I found out Sandy sent Burley and Lou to that cabin. I asked him why and told him I didn't like the looks of things. Well? He just laughed and said, keep my mouth shut. He said if I didn't, I might be charged with murder along with Burley and Lou. I sneaked away and came right here. I'm glad you did, Sadie. Is Sandy still in town? Yes. He sent his two gunmen to Elk Ridge. I know. I'll need your help to turn the tables on, Sandy. You willing? Yes, I'm never going back to that cafe. I'll be glad to help. Good. I want you to write a note to Sandy. I'll see it's delivered to him. All right, Sergeant. Then give me the key to your cabin, and you stay here till we come back. Now we'll get that note ready. Half an hour later, the barkeep at the cafe entered Sandy Parlin's office. Hey, Sandy. Indian brought in this note for you a couple of minutes ago. Thanks. Hey, this is from Sadie. Did she leave the cafe? Yeah. I saw her go out a while ago. Seemed kind of upset, too. What you say in the note? None of your business. Get out of here while I read it. All right, all right. Let me see. Dear Sandy, what you told me upset me very much. If you'll come to my cabin, I'll give back the money you gave me and tell you what I'm going to do. I don't intend to work the cafe anymore. Sadie, that double-crossing little fool. I better get over there in a hurry and find out what she's up to. A short time later, Sandy approached Sadie's cabin. I'll show her she can't pull any tricks against me. Uh, too cold to wait out here. I reckon she didn't hear my knock. I'll go in. Howdy, Sandy. What? Neil Holton. What are you doing here? I thought you... You thought I went to Elk Ridge, maybe, huh? I don't get this. But I do notice you don't have a gun, and I do. Hey, now there's no need to be hasty. Where's Sadie? She went uptown so as I could meet you alone. 
After a few things were explained to her, she sent that note to you so as I could meet you in private. <laughs> Good. I've been wanting to meet you in private. Now, look, Sandy, I... I haven't a gun. I decided that instead of gunning for you, I'd talk to you about squaring things another way. What way? Stake me to some cash. Say about half of what you got when you frame me into jail. <laughs> you must think I'm a fool. No, not exactly. Since Sadie knows I'm meeting you here without a gun, I... I figure you couldn't take a chance of killing me and hanging for murder. Sadie wouldn't dare open her mouth about the truth. I'd say I came here and found you robbing the cabin. She'd back me up, or else she'd have to admit she tried to send you into a trap I planned for you on Elk Ridge. But why shoot me, Sandy? Let bygones be bygones. If you stake me like I asked, maybe later I... I could even work with you at your cafe. I'd never trust you, Holton. You wouldn't forget this quick after hunting me for a year. You always were smart than me, Sandy. <laughs> when I think of how easy you put it over on me in the bank, I feel downright foolish. If you hadn't been such a stupid fool, you'd have protected yourself by counting that cash again before putting it away. <laughs> a frame and a dope like you is the easiest thing I ever did. Oh, then you admit you did frame me, eh, Sandy? What if I do admit it? Sure, I framed you. And now I'm getting you out of the way once and for all, Holton. Hold it! No, no. Watch him, King. No. Good work, Neil. Uh, Jake and I heard all that was said as we stood in the other room. No. Farland didn't notice the door was open. Oh, man, oh, I, uh, I sure was nervous. I wasn't any too comfortable without a gun. No. Carl and I could break you in two oh, for what you did to me. Let go. My, my wounded arm. Oh, go on. Get away from me. Harlan, I arrest you in the name of the Crown for attempted murder. You'll have to answer for that embezzlement that I was blamed for, too. Right. Let's get him to jail, and we'll go to the cabin on Elk Ridge and get the two gunmen he sent there. Later, Burley and Lou were waiting in the cabin on Elk Ridge when a knock was heard. Well, that must be Holton now. <laughs> You must be Neil Holton. Come on in. Sure. Hey, watch it. He has a gun. Yeah, and the mounties with him. I'll get the red coat. Hold it, Burley. No! I'll get that dirty coyote, Holton. Neil stood between Lou and Preston and was momentarily off guard. As Lou raised his gun, King, who had come with Preston and the others, went into instant action. The big husky sprang forward and grabbed Lou's gun out. I'll take him off. Help me. Don't, King. Easy, boy. Watch him. You two are finished. Farlan is already in jail, and I'm arresting you in the name of the Crown for attempted murder. Later, at Sergeant Preston's cabin, Preston and Jake smiled knowingly as Sadie attempted to explain to Neil Holton. Honestly, I didn't know what it was all about. The I... sergeant told me all about it, ma'am. It's all right. Thank you, Mr. Holton. I... Oh, now, look, if you want to call me Neil, I, uh, well, I, I, I sort of like it. All right, Neil. And remember, my name's Sadie. You know, I I bet a fella could make enough here in the Yukon to marry and settle down someday, don't you think? <laughs> I reckon so, Neil. Leastwise, there's plenty of them doing it. You haven't found any gold yet, but looks like you got a good start in the other direction. <laughs> hey, King? <laughs> you know, Sergeant, I really believe King knows exactly what Jake said. Maybe, Sadie. Anyway, I know he must be as happy as we are that this case is closed. We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. But first, here is Sergeant Preston. Have you boys and girls heard about the wonderful surprise that Gabby Hayes has for you? Well, here he is for some of his friends who are just about to receive theirs. Oh, give it to us now, Gabby, please. I can't wait. Please, Gabby. Simmer down, simmer down. It seems like thousands of buckaroos are scrambling to get this surprise. Yes, sir, so many people kept asking me, where in the world did you get that hat? Who ever had a hat like that before? Well, here's a surprise, because there ain't no other hat like it in the whole world. So I decided to have some hats like mine made up special for my friends. So here you are, buckaroos. Try them on. Oh, boy. Aren't they keen? No wonder all the kids want them. Everybody's getting them. And it's just like yours, Gabby. Why, sure. It's the spitting image of my hat. Just like the one I always wear in my Western movies and on my televisionary programs. Yes, sir Bob. But listen here, buckaroos. 
This idea of wearing a hat like old Gabby's is sure sweeping the country, and I just had a certain number of my hat made. So for Pete's sake, hurry. Don't wait till it's too late. Hurry up and send in your orders, pronto. Yes, it's all the rage these days to wear a hat just like old Gabby's. Everybody goes for the jaunty way the brim is pushed straight up from your forehead, for that beat-up look to the brim, for the cord under your chin with a hitch to hold it tight. And listen, this Gabby Hayes Prospector's hat isn't paper or flimsy stuff. It's made of real good quality soft wool felt. And I mean 100% wool felt. Why, you might think this hat would cost two or three dollars, but it's yours for only 75 cents and one box top from a package of delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. If you don't agree this hat is worth every penny you paid, return it and we will gladly return your money plus postage. Imagine a real hat of soft 100% wool felt for only 75 cents in coin. Think of what a wonderful present this hat will be for you and for your special friends. It comes in three sizes to fit every boy and girl. Now, I'll bet you don't know your head size. Well, just for fun, first take a guess, and then see how close you are. All you do is put a tape measure or a strip of paper around your head at the forehead. Now, go ahead and do it right now. And then make a note of the exact number of inches, even to an eighth of an inch, and send this measurement with your order. We'll send you the size closest to your measurement. Remember, send your name and address with 75 cents in coin at one box top from a package of swell-tasting Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Send to Hat, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now, don't wait. Send now tonight. And Gabby will see that you get a Gabby Hayes Prospector's hat just like his. Send to Hat, H-A-T, Hat, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. And don't forget your measurement. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting for duty, Inspector. Sergeant, the stage has been held up just outside of Whitehorse, and the guard was killed. I want you to get down there as quickly as you can. Yes, sir. Was the stage carrying gold? $20,000 worth. The driver has identified one of the road agents. Someone with a record, sir? Someone with a fine record up until now. A good friend of yours, Sergeant. Mike Brady. What? Well, it's hard to believe, sir. The identification was positive, Sergeant. I'm sure you'll not let friendship interfere with your duty. No, sir. I'll start for Whitehorse at once. Once more, the sergeant hits the trail in the cause of justice, inwardly convinced that his friend is falsely accused. But there are ruthless men who are determined Mike Brady must hang for murder. And those same men are ready to destroy anyone who interferes with their well-laid plans. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you every Tuesday and Thursday at this same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, fellas and girls, if you want to grow big and strong, eat Quaker Oats often. You get more strength, more energy from oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So tomorrow, start eating delicious Quaker Oats, the giant of the cereals. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. Listen tomorrow at the same time to the Green Hornet, brought to you by the drink that makes you feel fresh again, delicious Orange Crush. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>